In this video, we're going to be going over the cybersecurity introduction room on the pre-security path on TryHackMe. The cybersecurity introduction room is actually the first thing that you'll conduct whenever you are doing the pre-security path on TryHackMe. And it's super quick and easy. It goes over all just, you know, the broad strokes on the cybersecurity fundamentals, I guess you could say, whenever you're going through this pre-security path. So of course you can see that there are three sections. We have web application security, network security, and learning roadmap. Uh, and this doesn't, again, if, if you are a bit further into your cybersecurity journey, you don't even have to be that much further in. A lot of this is going to be very easy to you. And that's perfectly good. This can be a great review for you. If you are coming into, uh, you know, cybersecurity and you haven't gotten crazy deep, this can be a phenomenal learning path for you. And this room specifically will be kind of a great way to get the get the wheels sp spinning. It'll kind of show you, you know, the possibilities in cybersecurity. Uh, it'll show you some of the offense and defense side sides on this uh, on this room. And so we're going to dive right in. First is obviously web application security. So why, why do we need to understand how the web is important? Uh, to attack web applications, you need to understand how they work. Hacking web applications isn't some magical process, but does come down to knowing how a part of a web functions or part of, part of excuse me, how a website functions and being able to identify weaknesses and take advantage of them. Once you have a good understanding of the fundamentals, you'll learn how the techniques, tools, and procedures are used in hacking sites. If something is vulnerable, it means that there's a possibility of it being attacked or harmed. If an application or system has a vulnerability, there is something that can be attacked or taken advantage of, aka a weakness. Now you can see I've already added the answers in or, or completed this. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the progress just so uh, we have some level of suspense. So spoiler alert, if you saw some of those examples. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click view site. If you are new to try hack me, this is super cool. You can see it will literally like pop out like a little website. And then if you have a subscription, I believe you should be able to pop a, uh, a an attack machine on a separate tab and you can actually use that to complete some of these courses. So part one, you literally just need to check the website done. So easy, right? So what is the username of the book face account? I wonder they should, they should change this to continue to be a play on words, right? Like Zita or I don't know, whatever account you'll be taking over. So reading through here, you're an ethical hacker and it's your job to test for security vulnerabilities on Bookface. Let's look at taking a user account. Super cool. So we see Ben Springs, here's his user account. And we can see here in the URL, it specifies the user in the URL stream. So what is the username? It actually has a username here at the end of the URL. So we'll go ahead and put in Ben Springs. That is a correct answer. Super easy. And you might actually notice this uh, in websites. I think the more that you start to uh, to play around with web applications, a lot of things will start to make sense. I know for me, uh, I don't really have a, a background in web application uh, hacking, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so seeing a lot of this stuff uh, has been kind of relatively new to me, but the more that I've played around, especially with Try Hack Me, I think it's a phenomenal platform to do that. See, you know, you, you can see, but let's, users have public profiles. Uh, it's common for attackers to target a password reset functionality to look for issues to gain access to user accounts. So here we have the reset password function. So it'll be emailed a four digit code. Enter Ben's username. So we'll go ahead and enter ben.springs because we already know that. The account reset usually sends an additional code to the user's email to ver verify that they have triggered the password reset. Sometimes you might actually see this come into your email and it just kind of let, you know, if you haven't triggered, uh, you know, the, the, the code to be sent to you via the password reset functionality, and then you see that code come in, then that might be a cue. But that being said, sometimes it, attackers will write up phishing emails that will look like it's it's a four digit code and it's not, it's a phishing email. So do be careful whenever you see those either way. Um, so he will have the four digit code. We won't have access to the email. How do we get the code? There are 10,000 different combinations of codes and we can enter it literally just doing that. Try and putting in any random reset. So we'll start with 0000, submit. We're literally, what it's suggesting is manually brute forcing this. If I remember whenever I was going through this the first time, it doesn't make you brute force too high. But that's kind of what, you know, whatever, we'll move on. It's really, yeah, what, it, what it's basically doing is telling you to try brute forcing it, and then it'll show you the web request down here. So you can see the reset code, it'll 
basically combine the reset code and the username in the uh, post. So it's obviously it's not going to be possible to guess every single code because that's going to take forever. But you can automate this process using the repeater on and you can do this in burp suite. So it's going to tell you basically start with a minimum of 0001 and then 10,000 uh, the minimum of one and max 10,000. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it's literally going to brute force for us. And then here we get the reset code of 0187. And then we will go ahead and reset the password. We'll just call it password. Cool. And then there you go. You get the flag by brute forcing. So fairly easy. You just have to get that username right, which I was totally, uh, I was adding in the S at Springs so, or, you know, saying springs instead of spring, so don't do that. Anyway, network security, why networking is important. Networking is really important to understand in cybersecurity from scanning and identifying who and what is on a network to reviewing network logs to monitor and track what users have been up to will require you to have an understanding of how networking works. Try Hackme's complete beginner learning path will walk you through the networking concepts and give you enough knowledge to get started on your cybersecurity journey. Super easy, so let's go and hit the site. Uh, and that gives us the first one. So this is really just kind of showing, you know, I'm sure all of you might remember the 2013 Target uh, hack. It was pretty huge. And then here we go. It's kind of like walking through, you know, how exactly it, you know, they, they targeted an air conditioner unit, air conditioning unit. Then from there, they were able to gain access to, you know, other systems because it was networked. So that's why internet of things can be kind of dangerous if you're not networking them in a secure fashion. And obviously, if you're not changing the default credentials, changing the de default credentials is a pretty big deal security wise, because, you know, a lot of the de default credentials are publicly available anyway. Yeah, pretty big impact here. Not good. Big, bad. How much data? Oh, it cost. Uh, what was it? It was like three, 300 million. Yeah, too easy. And then the learning roadmap. Let's go ahead and close out of here. So here, you, you know, you see that the pre security path, it'll kind of get you primed. And then you can choose to go the offensive route or the defensive route. Um, or really, you can dip into both. I mean, how you choose to niche down in your career is totally up to you and based on the things that you enjoy doing. Uh, at present, I've been on the defensive path, uh, you know, medium to long term. I'd like to dip into the offensive path. But, uh, you know, there's <clears throat> there's a, most of the jobs you'll probably find are, you know, in defense. There's a lot in you know the pen testing side but uh you know you'll find this this is you know a lot more competitive than uh you know a lot of the defensive you know roles just because a lot of people or a lot of organizations are trying to hire on people to be on stock the teams for defense might be a heck of a lot bigger than the offense so anyway that's where we are that is the that's the the learning cybersecurity, like the the cybersecurity room for the pre-security path Again, super easy. Um, hopefully you didn't get the username incorrect like I did and spend a little too much time trying to figure out why that was. So that we're gonna be going through more of these. So definitely stay tuned on the channel and I will see you next time.